Good evening, Chill Party Peeps. I'm the Manga Man. Hi, and I'm Kitty. And welcome to our very, very late uh, review of Asen 2017. It's only like a week and a day old. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just going to go kind of power through this, try to make this not a 45 minute video. Yeah. So, uh, starting right off the bat with free stuff that they gave us. Free stuff. Yeah. Viz Media were pretty cool. They were giving away these free uh, poster carrying tubes. Yes. Makes you feel like a ninja. Definitely. And then, let's see, this. Did this also come from this? No, this came from the Antiplex. Or we could just show all the. Uh, you have all the posters, so we'll just I do. Yours. I do have all of them. I have Grand Order. Uh, Fate Grand Order, that is. Mm-hmm. Haven't seen it. Brutal Exorcist, which I do love. Makes me want to check out the, uh, Fate series, though. Grand Blue Fantasy, the animation. I have been seeing this one. So far, it's pretty good. Hero Manga. Haven't watched it. And JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the animation. JoJo! Yeah, that I have watched. Hey, what else is free? This, I had to buy something. Those are free. Boruto. These uh, Boruto uh, posters. Yep. We got two of them. Didn't get the last one, sadly, with Naruto on it, which mm. is the one I really wanted. But they ran out. And then I got this, Anonymous Noise. I don't know. <laughs> I got another one. <laughs> and then I had to buy something, but this is the coolest Dragon Ball Z poster. I love it. Yeah. And I got Super Saiyan Blue. Yep. And then this is um, Vampire Night. Yes, that one. We also have to buy something. Yes. I love it. Yuki. Ooh. But yes, Vampire Nights. And then... Then we have this awesome artist that had an awesome poster. Yes. Show it off. Do 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 Look at all that detail. It all goes it. through the entire Dragon Ball history. Yes. Except GT. Except GT. And except some movies. Yep, some movies. Some of the movies they have. They got Brawly, mm -hmm. they've got um That thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I forget its name. Yeah, well, I don't know its name either. But yeah. <clears throat> uh moving on to uh, some of the other free stuff. Mm -hmm. They were also giving away these little masks yeah. from Jojo and the classic okay. they're fans so you can like fan yourself around the hot stuffy convention center they're also giving away these bags but I gotta say even though that is a pretty awesome bag they are really cheap like, yeah both of our bags I mean look at this both of our bags broke pretty easily yeah, and his broke even worse than mine did. Mine broke, like, at the top, kind of. Yeah, yours yeah. broke at the top. Mine was just terrible. And, of course, there were free manga giveaways, like the first chapter of Dragon Ball Super and yep. other stuff. Yeah, what was the other one that we got? Uh, um, oh, Legend of Zelda oh, yeah. Twilight Princess. Yeah. It should be interesting. They seem to be going for, mm -hmm. like, a, a little bit different angle. Yeah. From the the Funimation booth always has like these. So yeah. Mm -hmm. I love them. I can't look at that. <laughs> and then we uh, have the actual purchase stuff that we got. Yep. Mm -hmm. I guess. Uh, but we also had a, a special uh, thing that uh, I guess we're starting to do now where we, uh, at every convention <laughs> we're going to, we mm -hmm. get a little something for each other. Yes, yes. And uh, mine was already spoiled. Yeah, I already spoiled it. <laughs> uh, but I got uh, you, honey, uh, Toko, the complete series. Toko, yes. To anyone who has like not ever heard of the series, it, it's really good. It did get canceled, which sucks, but I am like still obsessed with it. It's really bloody, a lot of action. I love Toko. I really wish that they would have continued. So yeah, but he bought this for me, and um, it's really funny because I was like debating on if I wanted to spend 25 and I was going back and forth on it, like, oh, do I want it, oh, do I not want it, and then um, 
I was gonna buy it at another booth because yeah. they were like brand new. Because the reason I didn't pick this up was because it was like used or whatever. And I was like, I could find it brand new somewhere. And then I found it brand new for the same price at another booth. And then. And I was like, like, Oh, you really? Uh, are you sure you don't want to save your money or something? Yeah, he he like played it off, and I was like, Well, I'm just gonna go back to that other booth and see if it was cheaper there. And then, yeah, and then he just told me, I bought it for you, so yay! I'm so excited to have this in my collection. Yay! Because I first started watching it on, like, Netflix, and now it's here, so yay! Okay, cool. Thank you, hon. Mm -hmm. Oh, we also and got t-shirts. Yes, we did. I got this cool Majora's Mask t-shirt. Yes, and I got this super cute Yoshi t-shirt. Yay! Yow. So Yow. cute. And then I'm going to show you what I got you. Yay! Should I close my eyes? Um, where did I put the bag at? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't looking where it I said bag. Hold one second. Yeah. Okay, one second. I don't want you to see it, so that's why I put it in the bag. Okay. This one I got you. Yeah. Oh, see, she turns little Zenigata. Yeah. Nice. I thought you'd like it. <laughs> oh, I love it. Another one for the Lupin collection. Ah, oh, look! Yes. He's like a little taking off his shoe a bit. So <laughs> that was it. Well, see if uh, Zenigata wants to. But you show off what else you bought, honey. Okay. Um. So I bought quite a few things. Lots of manga. Um, I got this, volume one of Happiness, Blood, I love it, Scary Vampires, yes, <laughs> thank you, volumes five and six of Real Account, which I'm obsessed with, I've got volume one of Dragon Ball Super, can't wait to read it. This is a new one, and it didn't even come out yet. Like, you can't purchase this yet. But it's called After Hours. Uh -huh. um, I thought it was a really interesting concept. So, I love this, like, mature, like, shoujo y type of manga. That's your favorite, mature shoujo? Yes, mature shoujo. Um, Fragments of Horror by Junji Ito, who I'm obsessed with. I love Junji Ito and everything that he writes. This is like the one piece that I've been wanting for my collection and just now got it, so I'm super excited for that. And I also got um, volumes four, five, and six of Forget Me Not, which is really cute. And then for anime, I bought just one for myself, and this is called Wannabe, The Strongest in the World. And I'm super excited because it's about wrestling and there's female wrestlers in the show. And I'm obsessed with wrestling, so okay. I hope it's not too like I hope it's not like head tighty or whatever, but we'll see. So yay! That's all I got. Yay. Yay. Oh, this is cool. Yeah. They actually have a shoe. I don't wanna like take them <laughs> apart just yet. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but I'll definitely show this off when I'm done building them. Yay! Show it on Facebook. Yes. I'll, on my Facebook fan account, so if you haven't had the chance, uh, go on to uh, the link in the description box below for a Manga Man Facebook fan page. You can comment and uh, message me. Do whatever you want. Love to hear some feedback. Yay! Yay! I have a Facebook too. Yes, she does. They're also giving away these free manga samplers, which mm -hmm. had like a bunch of them from the Dragon Ball Super to uh, Anonymous Noise, which I started reading and it just kind of felt like a... I didn't care for it. Yeah, I didn't care for it either. It was really disappointing because... Oh, whatever, I'll save that for another time. <laughs> and we picked up some classics. We've got... I've got uh, Trigun. Yes! I'm excited to watch that. Another one for the uh, Lupin collection, uh, Napoleon's Dictionary. Now I know what I said about this in my month of Lupin third video. Mm -hmm. But I didn't have it in my collection, so I was going to get it anyways. <laughs> <laughs> 
Then, uh, a blast from my past, really, I came across the uh, artist of this old web comic that I used to read back in high school, of all things. <laughs> uh, Flipside by uh, Brian Fulick. Folk? Folk? Folk. F O U L K E. Yeah. But yeah, I remember like uh, going out to the computers at my high school and reading this and Dominic Deegan and other Mega Tokyo. Like, oh man, that takes me back to high school. Wonder if Mega Tokyo. Way back. Wonder if Mega Tokyo even finished. Uh, I did not realize it when I got this, but uh, the two people that I really wanted to see today was uh, Tony Oliver. And uh, Shinichiro Watanabe, or Nabishin. And it just so happens that this has both of them in it. <laughs> you could have had them both sign it. I know, Nabishin was the director, and uh, Tony Oliver plays uh, Sena, the main lead in Tenchimuyo GXP. A fun addition to the uh, Tenchimuyo franchise. I still have to watch it. It's okay, it's pretty good. Cool. Then I got uh, an anime series based off of my favorite uh, book series when I was a kid, which um, in a video later you'll see I'm super sad they got mold on them. But anyways, not about depressing stuff. Del Toro Quest! Yay! Yay! I remember this was on like early, early in the morning, like on television, and I would occasionally watch an episode or two. Uh, it's so different looking than what you'd imagine from books, but that always happens. I also picked up some cheap stuff that uh, looked cool and that I knew was pretty cool. Uh, Project Echo uh, is done by uh, a lot of uh, Trigger veterans. Uh, this was some of their earlier work uh, before they became a part of, uh, uh, which was it? I think it was uh, first Gonzo. And then they, uh, not the Muppet. <laughs> oh my God. I was thinking of oh God. <laughs> okay. And I picked up the uh, classic uh, Nichijo. Yep. He did. Yes, I did. But now, let's talk about the con itself now that we've gone through all that we got. Okay. Ace of this year was pretty good. It was a little bit better than it was last year, definitely. I think it's because like, we had better panels this year. Yeah. The panels that we wanted, yeah. that, well, I wanted to see. Yeah. More panels that you definitely wanted to see. Um, I've been going to Anime Central since 2009, so I've seen it progress to what it is today. And it's, it, it's still a good convention. Um, but I definitely feel like they have competition mm. coming up. They definitely do. They're lacking in a few areas. Um, Though we were surprised of... this year with uh, the gaming room. Yeah, I've never have been able to get into Asen's gaming room because they will do bag check. Like, you can't come in if you have a bag. And knowing us as women, like, we carry bags with us. They won't let you get in with a bag or you have to leave it at the door. Which I thought was the stupidest thing ever because I'm a big gamer. I like playing video games and I could never do that at ASUN. Until now! Because now you can walk in and walk around and talk with people, play DDR. You don't have to leave your bags anywhere. So I think that's a huge, huge improvement. Like, mm. you know, when I went to Anime, Mid Anime Milwaukee for the first time, I was so surprised that I could actually get into the game room and it wasn't an issue. Like, it was with ASUN, so... I'm glad they listen to us because I've been complaining for the past like six years about it. So yeah, um, that's just one thing. Um, what else? Want me to? Okay. All right. So as I mentioned earlier, I I got to see both uh, Tony Oliver and Navishin, and I got to get their autographs on uh, two of their Lupin related works. I got Tony Oliver to sign my uh, Mystery of Mamo DVD collection. Mm -hmm. he, he signed it, catch you later, 
which is the uh, always the ending line that he said at the end of each uh, episode of the Red Jacket series, which was really cool. It was a really interesting meeting him. Like, y you know, like when you have this idea of how, what a person looks like based on their voice, and then you meet yeah. them, and I discovered that I'm actually taller than him. It's like, what? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, but I got so giddy when he, like, uh, started showing off his Lupin voice in the middle of his panel. I was like, <laughs> Well, some of the people there at the panel, at his panel, though, were like... I don't want to be mean, but they were kind of, um... I don't know, he... There were all there were these two guys that kept asking like r repetitive questions or stuff. You know, you always get those people that always want to like ask random questions when you really want to hear something else. Yeah. I, I don't know, uh, but I really enjoyed his panel. Uh, I also enjoyed uh, Nabishin's panel, which I have had him sign his Lupin movie that he did, mm -hmm. uh, The Columbus Files, also known Dakapo of Love. Which goes on lucky days. Little Afro guy. He was so cool. Oh, I had like another moment. Uh, like the last Japanese uh, person that I got to talk to was the composer of the Final Fantasy mu music. And uh, I had a really nice highlight with him where we were talking about our love of this uh, anime series called Phoenix Dun based on Ozuma Tatsuka's uh, groundbreaking manga series. And uh, he said, that, you love that? And I said, uh-huh, I love you. And I was like, oh. Aww. And I had a similar experience with Navishin where uh, I told him uh, basically what I said in my Month of Loop on the Third video about the, uh, about the Columbus Files and that I really love the relationship between Lupin and Fujiko. And like he, I could, you could just see it in his like expressions. Uh, even with sunglasses on, he like kind of warmed up to that. And he turned to a translator, like uh, said, and he he said to me uh, that uh, you make a very good movie reviewer. And that just <laughs> yeah, that really that really brightened up my whole day. I was just all Aww, smiles after so that. Yeah, that Plus, was really cute. Plus, Navishin's just a riot. Like, he used... He used the most popular pirating streaming site <laughs> to showcase the latest anime that he... Oh my gosh. ...want to be a hero. That was hilarious. Uh, and he had me and a guy with a huge afro do fusion, ha, huh? <laughs> to create Navishin because I was dressed as Lupin. Oh my god, post pictures. <laughs> yes, I post... Boom! Pictures. Yeah. <laughs> and you can also see more pictures on my Facebook. Yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so those are the big two highlights. Uh, got to meet Tony Alba. Got to say that he was my favorite Lupin. Got to shake his hand. Uh, got to meet Nabishin. Got that praise. That was just, <laughs> oh, it made me all warm and fuzzy. Yeah. It was really nice. Um, I really liked being able to meet both of them, mostly because you were super excited to meet them. And they were super cool people, too. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I guess, for, like, for panels, for this ASIN, there weren't too many, like, voice actors or actresses I was really excited to meet this year. They have Yamcha's um, Japanese voice actor. Yeah. Random. Yeah. Um, Alexis Tipton was there, I believe that was her name. Um, she was the voice of Saya from Blood Sea, which I loved, <laughs> but I didn't get to meet her or anything, so, um, yeah, other than that, I thought the panels were just, they were, like, okay this year. Um, <laughs> the panels I wanted to go to, um, either got, like, cut off, kind of, or we were, we, like, entered late, so it wasn't a whole lot that we could do with it. Um... Yeah, I went to a K-pop panel, a K-pop dance panel, and they were already dancing. So it's just like, okay, waited for, like, you know, their intermission or whatever, and they didn't start anything new, so that was, like, kind of lame. We hopped into a Phoenix Wright panel. Which, which was... I th think it could have been, like, very interesting how they kind of set it up. Yeah. As kind of like a choose-your-own-mystery-almost type yeah. series. 
I think it would have been helpful if they printed out everything. Yeah. And had the details, like, so everybody can... You know, like an it. actual trial. Yeah. Because <laughs> we should get a list of evidence and the autopsy and all that. Yeah, we should. And um, there were a couple panels that I really wanted to go to that were canceled. Um, like, there... <laughs> it was so sad. There just wasn't a whole lot for, like, panels for me. Anyway. Mm. Um, but I went... We went to prom. We went to prom, Mason prom. Which was pretty fun. The DJ, I felt, was a little better. I feel like it's the same DJ from last year. Maybe. And he played some really kind of corny music, like... <laughs> He played the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, he played the Pokemon theme, but they were all cool. I mean, they're not songs I would dance to, but everyone got the singing. Yeah, I feel like he could have switched up the playlist a little bit better. Some of the songs were, like, a little older, like, I requested that he played Missy Elliott, because you could actually, for the first time ever, text um, songs that you want the DJ to play. Mm. And I texted him, like, Missy Elliott. And you texted him, like... I texted him the theme to Loop on the Third because this yeah. prom was jazz-themed. Yeah. And you can't have a jazz-themed anime prom... Post a picture of us. Okay. Yes. Without having a Loop on the Third uh, song in there. Right. They played Cowboy Bebop. I, I guess that counts. Yeah. I feel like he could have done a little bit more. He cut off Gungam style. Like, yeah, you don't <laughs> cut out Gungam style. Everybody was going crazy for it. And then Everybody it's just like, crazy. And then it just, like, I don't know what happened. Like, uh, someone told him, like, hey, you gotta cut it out. You gotta cut it out. I have no idea what happened, but I don't know. I was, the music was okay. I wanted a little bit more. Then, like, Randall played some Kelly Clarkson song, which is like, how do you dance this? You don't dance to... Kelly Clarkson, walk away. Like, I'm just gonna say that right now. Just walk away. Come on. Away. Come on, DJ. Next year, if you're there again, DJ Squid Hat, please. Was that his actual name? Yeah. DJ Squid Hat. Yeah. Hmm. Please. Like, better music selection. You're a you played the same playlist, well, somewhat of the same playlist as last year. You're please step it, step it up just a little bit. Thank you. I would appreciate that a I lot. So you have to pay to get in a prom, too. Like, yeah, we do have to pay to get in a prom. Hey, Sen, do something about that. <laughs> like, I don't mind it because we do get, like, food and snacks and unlimited water and stuff. But True, true. Yeah. But do you have to pay to get into the soap bubble? I don't... I'm not sure. Mm. I think the soap bubble is free. Because, you know, if, if people had to pay for it, people would just be like, meh, <laughs> I'm broke. I don't have money to pay for it. Hmm. Uh, I feel like in terms of stuff that they could... Well, you don't want just anybody walking into the prom either, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so... true. You don't want some... We had some crazy people, like, our last night. There was this guy that, as we were walking out, that walked past us, and he was bleeding from the forehead. Bleeding from, like, and his entire area was spots cut. Spots of blood, yeah. like, a trail of it. It was like, oh my god, that is dangerous. It was really dangerous. Like, I, if I wasn't paying attention to the floor, I would have walked into, like... It was a trail of blood. It wasn't just, like, a, a little splat here and there. It was, like, a it's good... like, follow the trail. A good trail of dripped blood. And we don't even know and, what... I have no idea what caused that to happen. And that's the thing. Like, the soap bubble's going on at the same time as the formal, and they're both in different buildings, so you get, like, the crazy raver kids that that's all they want to do when they go to ASIN is they want to go to the soap bubble they want to go to the rave they want to party drink and take drugs <laughs> I'm not saying ASIN is all like this but you do get that type of crowd and it's it's weird mixing <laughs> kind of mm. um but yeah I hope ASIN can kind of do control that somehow you know have more oh another thing ASIN needs more volunteers and more yeah, staff. Yeah, they definitely need more volunteers because, like, we, uh, like, what, what was your example you were going to say? Well, I was just going to say, like, somebody could have been at least walking through the skywalk because I feel like it was maybe, like, a good ten minute period of when that guy had walked through the skywalk from when we had to cross his path and see all that blood mm -hmm. that somebody, some type of staff member should have seen it and cleaned it up because... Bloodborne pathogens, <laughs> you yeah. know, like that stuff is dangerous, especially in such a tight space. 
that everybody has to walk through. Like, some people can't handle seeing blood. And I know it could have happened anywhere, but they need staff monitoring at night as well because people are going to and from and stuff like that's going to happen. And But on Friday, we went to, like, two panels, and they were totally just open. And, like, people were just walking into the room before the panelists even got there. And I think that that is... I don't think that's acceptable. You know, I feel like as a panelist, you should have time to walk into the room and have the doors closed, get everything set up, and then have all the guests come in. Like, I don't know if it was just because it was Friday and it wasn't as busy as, like, Saturday or Sunday, but I feel like they need more volunteers, more staff there at the doors. Mm -hmm. So people... So they could tell people, hey, this is canceled, or hey... They're running late. They need to make sure people are forming a line and all this other stuff. It was just a little disorganized. So, yeah. Yeah. I do uh, also feel that uh, this is my own little tyrant. Uh, you vendors that come into the vendor room. I'm not talking about you artists. The artist alley this year was amazing. They had their own little separate section. It yeah. was nice, open. You could see everybody's art. I'm talking about vendor vendors. Like, Specifically anime vendors, because, like, the consistency of prices between them uh, either can be, excuse me, mm -hmm. uh, pretty consistent, like $60, $60, but then you get, this is one vendor that has, like, a lot of rare anime stuff there, but they also have some stuff that you could find in, like, other vendor room, and there your prices are beat. Ridiculously high. Yeah. Like, paying, like, $100 for a complete series of, I don't know, pick your poison, Gurren Logan, Cowboy Bebop, or something. It's like, mm -hmm. I always have a hard time with uh, sellers that try to make you buy four episodes for 60 bucks. Yeah. That ain't right. I don't like that. That ain't right. Or like, uh, there's one, there were two Bobo Bo uh, discs. Uh, one of them was just like a couple of episodes. It was five bucks. Okay, that's fine. Complete series, 120. Like where? Wow. How does that happen? <laughs> I mean, I would love to get a bubble ball, but for 120, that's a bit much. Yeah. And it's, I don't know if it's just because some of this media is like... Rare. Rarer to find. And not in print. So that you, as vendors, you can price your stuff at whatever price you really want to, but mm -hmm. it's... Uh. That's a tip for all you uh, people going on into the vendor's room. Shop around. See where everyone is having their prices at. Don't always go towards, you know, the uh, Funimation booth or the Viz Media booth and right. get the stuff full price there. See if one of the other vendors has it for a little bit cheaper price. Yeah. And who knows? You might find it. That's how I was able to get uh, Trigun mm -hmm. for uh, only like 25 bucks for that. Yeah, because at um, one of the booths we went to, I saw Trigun, and it was like maybe 35 bucks for the complete series. And then was it at the actual Funimation booth where it was cheaper? Yes, I believe yeah. so. <laughs> so just look around the whole convention floor and make sure you know like prices at every different um section and one thing you can do is like kind of take like a little picture of the area just so you don't get lost if you're if you have like a specific booth where you know you found a good deal at and you want to look around more it's good to like kind of keep track of like where stuff is on the floor i think they should have like a section for when people need to eat they did have a little section off to the side though it got crowded really fast mm -hmm. and there wasn't that many tables we got to meet some cool people and talk with a bunch of them yeah we did uh but overall uh bullet points of basin mm -hmm. get more volunteers yeah vendors quit being so stingy on them prices yeah uh game room high praise for finally being able to come in with your bags yes and uh, keep up the good work with uh, getting more recognizable or well-known uh, panelists. Yes, because, uh, again, I feel like a lot of other conventions in the area, like, they're coming for ASIN. And ASIN is, like, the largest in the Midwest. And I feel like some of the lineup for, like, 
anime Midwest or like even anime Milwaukee had like some more well known mm. voice actors there. I just feel like they need to really step it up a little bit because we're paying seventy dollars for tickets. Yeah. You know, bring us some really good stuff because they're gonna ace it. I can guarantee you if they don't really. Oh, on top of that, this was the twentieth year anniversary. It was a. Oh, it was. Oh, that's right. It, it was. was the twentieth year anniversary. It was the twentieth year anniversary, and I just feel like they could have. It could have been so much bigger. In a way, you know. Twenty year anniversary. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Twentieth year anniversary. Twentieth year anniversary. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know, Asim. Like, literally, <laughs> Anime Midwest has like baby metal coming. Yeah, freaking to baby metal. Baby metal. And Lady Beard. And Lady Beard. I love Lady Beard. <laughs> I love Lady Beard. Studio Trigger. Ooh, that's a big one. You know, I want I want Asim to stay at the top, but right now these other like conventions are coming for the throne, so. Hopefully next year they can get it together. Battle of the cons. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ace is like, okay, Anime Expo is like the Super Bowl. Ooh, there you go. But Ace is like whatever is like less than the Super Bowl. <laughs> okay, Ace is like Asin? the Summer Slam to wrestling. Oh, okay. I was gonna say Ace the Rose. It's not Bowl. WrestleMania, but it's like Summer Slam. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all the time that we have here to talk about Ace tonight. Hope you enjoyed our little mini review. I'll also have a link for the uh, anime vlog, anime uh, central vlog series, yeah. where we uh, kind of filmed ourselves. It may be twenty one minutes long, <coughs> so yeah. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Not as long as this. Anyways, this has been the manga man. And me, Kitty on the leash. And we'll see you at the next con. Bye. Bye! What is this? Air quotes. <laughs> Bye! Bye.